Ugandan opposition leader Dr. Chisa Besiji says Ugandan security forces have put he and other opposition leaders under house arrest. Another opposition leader, Robert Chakulai, also popularly known as Bobby Wine, told reporters on Thursday in Kampala that he had also been put under house arrest. The, op- the opposition had called for demonstrations on Thursday to raise awareness about poor roads in Uganda and a demand for the whereabouts of allegedly missing opposition supporters. This, as Uganda hosts the Northern Line Movement Summit today, Friday, the police said the protest was intended to tarnish the country's image. Dr. Besiji is a four-time presidential candidate and currently the leader of the People's Front for Transition. He tells me it was imprudent for the Northern Line Movement to choose Uganda as a host, a country whose leader, he says, is abusing the rights of its citizens. I could not get out of my home. My home is still surrounded up to now by police. So has been the homes of uh, the Honorable Chagulani Babuain and uh, the Lord Mayor of Kampala. They too had their homes barricaded and couldn't get out. But uh, nonetheless, the protest went on. It was mainly focused on um, shining a torch on the terrible roads, uh, especially in the central areas of Kampala and surroundings. You say you are not allowed to leave your home. Did the police prevent you from leaving your home? And if so, did they tell you why? Prevented, yes. In fact, right at my door, the main gate that leads out of my house is parked a huge police truck. And uh, at uh, smaller exits, there are heavy deployments of uh, the police and military police. And uh, I, of course, tried to get out of home, and uh, they couldn't budge. I inquired as to what they were all about and uh, whether they knew they were breaking the law and the constitution by doing what they were doing. They were absolutely mum. Nobody replied to me. So up to now, I haven't heard from anybody in the police as to why they are doing what they are doing. But like I said, uh, this is not something new. The violation of our rights with impunity is something that has become now more or less the routine and is indeed at the heart of why we have to continue asserting our will and protesting the injustices that we face. We haven't been able to reach uh, the police, but the police have said that they were not going to allow you to protest because your protests have always been violent. Well, very clearly not supported by the slightest iota of evidence. All our protests, first of all, in the construct, in the messaging and in practice, have been peaceful. None of our people has ever carried any weapon or anything that can be used in violence. And indeed, whatever protests we have engaged in would be peaceful and the breach of peace would come from the police. Sometimes in uh, retaliation, some people throw stones, but this is always in response to the unjustified, brutal attack that the police undertakes on the population. Dr. Besiji, uh, as you know, um, the Northern Line Summit is... Uh taking place in uh, Kampala, Uganda. Why don't you wait until after the summit? Because one of the things I think the police have said is that you want to have this protest just to embarrass the government. Well, first of all, uh, no summit should deprive citizens of their rights. And indeed, uh, you know, Uganda is a very, very welcoming uh, country. Our people are some of the most generous hosts you can ever find anywhere. But I think that uh, our guests should also have exercised the prudence in choosing their destination because there is no doubt that uh, the non-aligned movement, which was set up on the platform of freedom in the world, 
of pushing back against colonialism, against imperial power and uh, abuse. They chose this time to be hosted by a sit tight dictator who is denying freedoms from his own population. So I think, first of all, it was grossly imprudent for the non-aligned movement to choose one who is abusing and denying the rights of his own citizens. Dr. Chisa Bezhi is a Ugandan opposition leader. He was speaking with us from the capital, Kampala. Guinea's military junta on Thursday arrested several journalists who tried to hold a protest to denounce the military's treatment of the media. The military has removed several popular private television and radio stations from the air and restricted Internet connections, citing national security threats. Dawuda Mohamed Kamara is the editor-in-chief of Espars FM, he tells me the authorities arrested a total of nine journalists on Thursday. Yes, it's true. As you know, it has been more than two months today since the transitional authorities decided to restrict access to the media, jam radio channels and blog televisions in the Canal Plus package. The press union decided to protest against the restriction of the media and respect for press freedom. And this morning, they decided to uh, get together at uh, the press house uh, at Minier. Is there the soldiers, police, and gendarme came to prevent their movements? No uh, argument. They just said that because the authorities said that there is no movement, so they prevent the movements. The decision by the journalists to protest, I think, stemmed from uh, restrictions on Internet and the banning of some radio and television stations. Can you tell us how is the Internet situation? Has it improved? The Internet situation is always bad because still people using VPN to get connects and the websites and information websites are also in the same situation the radios and the televisions, as I told you, they are also always on the same situation as for today. All the programs uh, broadcasting from the radio stations were blocked by the government, and they, we don't know how they try to do it, but when you take Espas, you take film, you take any other radio, just two musics playing, the music uh, that taking part of uh, the, our soldiers, as we used to eat and when the country is in danger, but no program was seriously going on. There was just music playing on the radios. We hear that the authorities have arrested uh, some journalists. Who are some of the journalists that you know were arrested? As I speak to you, there are nearly 10 journalists arrested, nine exactly. We have uh, Ibrahim Afula Mori uh, Bari, we also have Jiwa Ba, we have uh, Lai Madi Kuyate for Evasion, and so uh, Nabi Lai Kamara for Juma Media. There are nine altogether. Dawida Mohamed Kamara is the editor in chief at Espas FM. He was speaking with us from the Guinea capital. A cargo plane contracted by the United Nations on Thursday crashed while landing on an airstrip in El Badi in Somalia's southwest state, killing one person and injuring two others. The aircraft was carrying humanitarian supplies for the World Food Program when it veered off the runway. The United Nations in Somalia expresses its condolences to the family and colleagues of the victim and wishes a speedy recovery for the injured, UN said in a statement on Thursday. The UN said it was working with the contracted airline company, the federal government and the Southwest State Authorities to investigate the incident. The incident comes just a week after a UN helicopter made an emergency landing in an Al-Shabaab controlled territory in central Galmudug state. An international UN memo circulated to staff in Somalia last week said nine people were aboard the helicopter and six were reportedly taken into captivity. One passenger was believed to have been killed and two had fled, the memo added. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will travel to Cape Verde 
Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Angola next week, the State Department announced his fourth trip to the African continent. The trip comes after 17 cabinet-level official visits last year as a follow-up to the 2022 U.S.-Africa Leaders' Summit in Washington. President Joe Biden has also expressed his desire to visit Africa this year, but no definite plans have been announced. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said Blinken's six-day trip will highlight how the United States has escalated the U.S.-Africa partnership since the summit, including in areas such as climate, food, and health security. He will also emphasize our future-focused economic partnership and how the United States is investing in infrastructure in Africa to boost two-way trade, create jobs, and home and on the continent, and help Africa compete in the global marketplace, Mila said.